Um, thank you very much for agreeing to meet. I was a bit of a panic there. Oh no, what if they don't turn up? But you're here. Thank you. Taking yeah, time. Sorry. Hectic times at the minute. A lot been happening in the in the when rivers meet world. Yes. Um, in particular, oh, yeah. the, the release of the album on Friday. I'm not going to say at last, but how are you feeling about it now that it's out there and everybody's hearing it? Oh, totally relieved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like relief. And at the moment, we're just proper edgy to the yeah. point where Aaron even resorted to going out and painting stripes on the shed because <laughs> All right, <okay>. we're, <laughs> we're waiting to hear... Um, we, it's like the last push today for the charts. We're hoping to get a top ten. Yeah. We won't find out till tomorrow. So it's like the last few hours now. Yeah. So it's just busy it's making sure everything's going through. And the midweek yeah. was looking promising. I think was it six? Uh, yeah. Or six in the in the midweek charts. So that's that's got to be got to be encouraging. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. And we we're sort of seeing the the daily updates and stuff, so we know the score, and we're we're just like. <laughs> I say I couldn't look at it daily. I would have to just ignore it and and wait until it came out because I'd be in complete panic. But there we are. You're braver than I am, clearly. Uh, I mean, what about the reaction to it more generally? I mean, how how have you felt about the about your fans' reaction to it, for instance, or or what other people have been saying? Yeah, uh, the reactions have been amazing. It really has. And um, we we all we thought ourselves, even though um, we loved We Fly Free and Saving Grace albums that we did over the last couple of years, we thought this one we think is better. Um, but looking back at it, I don't know if it's, that's that's true. It's just where we are at the time, you know. And, uh, yeah, we, we we absolutely loved recording, well, all three albums, but this this last one especially. And um, It does feel like we've evolved a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. And we were probably, we were, we were definitely most confident going in with this album. Sure. And the nice thing is, as well, we've been less... Um, kind of less worried about the reaction obviously it's really important to us that people like it it goes without saying but we've got more confidence behind it whereas like yeah. with we fly free we were terrified you know like oh my god what are people going to think and we it's kind of you know... held back a little bit on we fly free and saving grace to a certain extent but um because we didn't want to make it too heavy um but this, we didn't this on this one and then we didn't on this one we just let go you know so <laughs> Well, no, I mean, you, you, the, the sort of pre-release stuff, you were saying that, that you that you were going in with a more rocky feel, that you wanted to do, what was the quote? Uh, you wanted to go in without restricting yourself. So yeah. that, that must have made a, a different dynamic in the studio, apart from anything else, yeah? Definitely, mm. yeah. And there was still some, like, I remember um, when we were even getting the, the mixes here on the last day, our producer had added in some, like, sub drops and stuff. And I was like, you know, you just pushed, you've just gone across the line. That's too heavy now. <laughs> so... There's still like a boundary, but um, I think it's probably because we've been doing mm. loads more live shows and you start sort of thinking about what you want to play live. Yeah. So I think that's probably allowed us to yeah. bring into more rocky vibes Absolutely. as well. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it comes across, it's interesting. Uh, I, I I put a question out on, on your sort of fan page and uh, right, yeah. Facebook. Uh, so we've got quite a lot of good ones back. And they've obviously got some long-standing fans there. So for instance, Richard yeah. Gosling, said very much a, a, a growth and progression from the homes oh. and bonds days and is that just personal <laughs> growth or, uh, is that just your personal growth your musical growth what do you think has has prompted that is it where you are musically just now in terms of what you're listening to where did that come from yeah i think all of the above um right. literally um it's personal um growth and like say musical growth for sure um just finding different techniques as well of, of what we want at the time um yeah i mean so. we've we've always like we've never liked a fuzzy guitar tone and that's something we've really leaned into this time we yeah. were loving it um and i think as well especially like all the long-standing fans who've been following us like before covid when we were playing pubs and mm. um our confidence has grown so much mm. And we really felt that in particular this year, like when we finished the tour this year, we were like, we feel like different people because it was a big stretch for um, the debut tour, it was a big stretch for us. Um, and as much as we loved it and it was, we're so pleased we'd done it and it was exhilarating, it was a big stretch to mm. go pubs before COVID headline tour yeah. coming out. And it was pretty terrifying. I mean, we announced the tour. The first tour we did without even having a band, didn't we? Yeah, we, we didn't did. even we have didn't a band at the time. I was like, oh my god, we gotta get a band together. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was great, but um yeah, it was a big old we had to go up several levels in one go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, just a bit, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's come across, and even my favourite track, and a number of people have been talking about Golden, and just the feel of, of Golden. First of all, your your vocals together just always sound awesome, but then the, the addition of the, the gospel choir and just that whole feel from that track, I think that has gone up another level. I, I, oh, thank you. Hats off to you. How did you hook up with the choir, the gospel choir? Where did they come from? from so um, our producer had been working on... Um, a record before us and they'd had this amazing choir on it and mm. we we absolutely like we were like we should have a gospel choir on say and we we wrote golden and instantly we were like that's the one it yep. needs a choir on it yep. and um but we contacted the choir and they were so expensive <laughs> we're, like, we're independent guys that ain't yeah, happening no chance. you're not saying they're not worth it this choir because they're amazing but yeah. we were like that's not really going to work so yeah. we said maybe as part of our ethos as well, let's call in people that we know and that our producer knows and that we've worked with before. Yeah. Um, and so we called them all into a church and our producer directed them all and we created just this amazing like choir and just in one day. And it it feels really authentic to the song. And I think, you know, in hindsight, maybe having a, a like a slick choir it wasn't exactly right what we've got is, is what we, got is right. what we yeah. need so yeah. well it, they do it sounds awesome and the track the track sounds awesome i mean there's a couple of things coming out of that uh again from the fan page nev buxton wanted to know are, are you would you consider using backing singers either live or in the studio is that something now you've, you've got bitten by the bug that you could see yourself expanding musically that way as well I well, think yeah, so. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have actually spoke about that. Funny enough, um, yeah. So we have the doors we, open for it. For yeah, sure. we have thought about. It. We always tend to we get excited about things like that, and we're like, "Oh, we can have a, we can have a choir, and like we can have someone do this. We have keys, we have a lighting guy, and then we go, yeah, how we get how are we going to do that? <laughs> how are we going to get everyone to the gig? You know, and yeah. so um, yeah, it starts with that, that enthusiasm, and then we have to think practically. So that's where <laughs> that's what normally what happens. Well, there we are. Aim, aim high, and uh, it's always worth aiming high. But no, I, absolutely sounds, sounds fantastic. I mean, you talked here about Adam, so let's 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 go with Adam for a wee bit. How how did you hook up with Adam? Is he an old friend? Is he just somebody that that you knew? How did you? Uh, get him involved in in producing the producing your records and playing in your yeah. band yeah yeah so um we found adam because um where we live we're like in colchester essex area mm. and um there's as in with every town and city there's like a big community of musicians who know everybody and know each other and um and we heard a fellow musician in colchester had recorded an album with ads and straight away we listened to it and i was like that's so that production is amazing yeah so we went um and had a chat with him mm -hmm. and got on really well straight away and so we've, so this, we've never looked back really yeah this we? was back in uh, 2019 yeah, so I think we went in recording what about done two EPs May or something like that, yeah. something like that, yeah. And um, yeah, it's been, it's well, he he's been such a key part of us finding mm. our sound, and sure. something it makes him such a good producer. Not only he's multi instrumentalist, so he can create this, the, you know, what you want to create. He's capable of of playing it and doing it, yeah. and like with keys and everything else he does, but. Um, also, he doesn't try and force you in any direction. So he very much listens to what you want to create and he jumps on the bandwagon with you and makes it stronger. That's what Absolutely. it feels like. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, we've worked with other producers in the past who want you to follow their vision. They want, they want to mould you. And that is absolutely yeah. not Adam's ethos. So no. that's why you know we've stuck with him because he's just great and and then like you say he now plays bass for us live so um we don't know how we're trying to we hopefully he'll be able to keep playing with us but because he's a producer as well he's tied to his studio so yeah. fingers crossed for as long as we can we'll have him on the road as well well i, I was I, I saw you in glasgow uh outstanding uh gig at the at the garage in glasgow. Nice. Um, I, but i was concerned he was there in his bare feet i mean do you not let him have shoes in case he tries to run away is this the is this what it's no, all he he is Mr. Bare Feet. He he doesn't he likes yeah. to be connected to the earth. And that is yeah. it. Yeah. As simple as that. Yep. He's very, yeah, like very organic. Yeah. Likes to doesn't like shoes. 
and and we actually we we um we were playing in Cornwall and um he disappeared off to go for a swim in the sea <laughs> and we were driving down the road and there was Adam like just with a pair of shorts barefoot just walking down the high street we were yeah. like pick yeah. him up <laughs> Ad, so funny. Adam's life is music and vegetables basically that's it it's yeah. what he loves and that's great yeah growing oh, vegetables and. Well, actually, my theory was that you were just keeping him chained to the band. My daughter's theory is maybe closer. She thought he maybe had to feel the music through his feet, so that sounds... Well, that than. is probably yeah, true. Maybe, he yeah. Yeah, he doesn't like any sort of, like, restriction, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, hang on to him as long as you can, because I think it, you you push... You don't push, that's not the right word. You are an independent band in so many ways, and uh, but you don't sound like... Again, I don't mean this the wrong way. You don't sound like amateurs. The sound that he creates... It is awesome. You sound great. You sounded fantastic and and live, uh, and you sound great on the record as well. So hang on to him as long as you can. I would say. What do I know? Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> um, I mean, tour. We're, we're talking about touring, so let's jump in. That was one of your other big announcements, quite uh, just a few days ago. There, uh, you've announced some more dates. You're going out and tour again. Tickets were on pre-sale through Planet Rock. I mean, that that's a, that's a great endorsement from them. Are you are you feeling you're getting that kind of uh, support from people like Planet Rock and from others already in the business? Definitely. I mean, we've been really lucky um, right from the get-go, like Planet Rock played our first single. So, um, yeah, there's definitely that support out there. And, um, yeah, we just, we, we're just we incredibly lucky. We've had a lot of... We've been sort of quite strategic as to who we work with as well. And we've, we've yeah. kind of just... Um, teamed up with a new booking agent and new promoters and stuff so for us because we've come in completely cold we yeah. don't have any connections in the industry and so it's taken us a while to build up you know sort of the right relationships with people but we've really got there now yeah please. and I think that's one of the good things about being independent because you can choose who you want to work with and um you know make your own and decisions thankfully because we've got such good support yeah. it gives us the opportunity to do that you know where we've sort of got We've got, um, as Aaron said earlier, like with this album release, it's like we've rallied the troops. That's how it feels. It's like, come on, let's go to we doing it. So. Yeah. I, was, I was going to come back to the fans later, but I, I, and I will in a minute, I think, actually. But I wanted to stick with the tour just a wee bit longer. First of all, thank you. You're coming back to Glasgow again. Uh, St. Luke's, a new venue for you. You've never been to St. Luke's before? No, no first time. Uh, yeah, so very, very near the legendary uh, Barrowland, so you'll, you'll need to have a wee kind of wonder. It's perhaps not the most salubrious area of Glasgow, but uh, I, I would have a wee wonder while you're there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a venue I've been to yet, I'm, that's so I'm, I'm hoping I'll get there soon. But um, anyway, that's beside the point. Glasgow, who cares? Only me. Uh, but we we'll have to, if you do want to come, just uh, yeah, let us know. We'll, we'll get your tickets. We'll put you on the guest list. Well, for, for various reasons, I would love to come. Uh, for various reasons, I'm not able to go to gigs just now, but that, that's... that's oh, my okay, problem. yeah. We'll, we'll, not, we'll not go into that just now. Uh, but what I was going to ask just about the tour is, you've already mentioned you're hoping Adam will be with you. Are you hoping for um, the same drummer who was it? Foxy Fox, you called him, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, we definitely hope yeah. so. Um, yeah, Foxy, he's been playing for us. He actually started on keys for the yeah. first gig. Um, and then he covered for our drummer for the second gig because our drummer got COVID and yeah. was unwell. Um, and we never looked back, really. He's an incredible musician. Yeah. And he's so, like, we get Again, on so well with him. Again, another multi-instrumentalist, isn't he? Yeah. So he can literally play everything. So Yeah. yeah. And we're hoping a... to have a play on our music as well going forward, which yeah, is going to be exciting. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds a bit Ringo then. So he wasn't originally banned, but he somehow rather bumped the other guy off so he could... Uh... I know, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Unintentionally, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and any any ideas about support at this time? Again, that was one of your fans was asking who who you think you might get for support for the tour. Have you have you got thoughts on that, or are you just leaving? We've off we've definitely time? got yeah we've definitely got thoughts on it, but we are uh, um, we're still keeping it um, to ourselves at the moment. Um, yep. But yeah, there there are definite uh, ideas out there for sure. And that's another cool thing we get yeah. to choose like people we believe in really strongly. So exactly. we're really hoping to get who we want. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean uh, um, Ariel. Ariel. Ariel was a great, yeah, yeah. A great choice on your your last tour there. Uh, I think she fitted really well, and it was fantastic to see her up on the stage and actually taking a solo as part yeah. of her set. I mean that again just says something about you as a band. I I really thought that was fantastic. That wasn't a question. Oh, that was just a bit of 
uh, fanboy bit there. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but again, just on the tour, one of the other uh, one of the other uh, one of your fans on Facebook did ask, uh, "What about touring Europe? I mean, have you got plans for world domination, or are you happy with the UK at the minute?" <laughs> Yeah, we'll, oh, be, for sure. we'll be dipping our toe into Europe in 2024 yep. for the first time. So, um, again, lots more learning curves, yep. and, but we're really excited about it. So, yes, that's definitely on the cards. But again, quite a change from, I mean, you still talk about touring in the van and sleeping in the van and, and just the two of you. To, to sort of grow like this, that, that must add added pressures. Is, are you feeling the pressures, not as musicians, but as a kind of responsibility for this kind of bigger thing that is beginning to happen? Uh, I'd say definitely, yeah. Um, yeah. As things grow, um, because it's just uh, Grace and myself, um, there's there's a lot of responsibility on us to make sure that everything runs smooth and we know what it's. Yeah, there's yeah. Just so many little things all the time. We've got we've got a good team of like people who work with us, but yeah. ultimately we, you know, we sort of are leading everything, yeah. and it's kind of cool because. You know, when we started, it felt very much like the analogy is like you're trying to get in, get the wheel turning. Yeah. And yeah. then it got to the point where it was like you're self-sustaining. And now it feels like we're trying to run after it. <laughs> it's yeah. probably the best way I can put it. Yeah. But um, like, so we do have a great team yeah. around as well. Uh, my best friend works for us as well. And, and so does your best friend. Um, and obviously we've got the band and they, they pitch in. You know, yeah, with everything as well. So, yeah, it's great. And yeah. front of house, and we've all got we've got such great people. So yeah. we're lucky as well. Yeah. Um, and what was nice as well is you you finished off your tour. You've been picking up a few festivals here and there. I've noticed as well. How how does that feel? Is that a relief just to go into a festival that somebody else has kind of booked you for, as opposed to to setting up your own tour, or do you prefer it when you've got a bit more more control over who's who's watching you, apart from anything else? Um, I guess it's, I mean, it's always nice to have an audience that are there just for you is added pressure, but equally amazing. You know, like mm. everyone knows the music to a certain extent mm. and they're there for you, which is awesome. Um, but then the other side of it is you can rock up to a festival and, you know, an hour before go on stage. But I mean, then that comes with pressures of like, yeah. what's their rig? We've not got as much information getting on and off stage quickly. And Yeah, exactly. So and, and, it's and kind a of lot of festivals you're going to get like half an hour to, to, to get on, set up, like do a quick uh, line check and then away you go kind of thing. So... Sometimes that can We're be quite stressful. We're not very plug and play, so no, we... <laughs> we take a little bit of time, don't we? So yeah. Too many bow vamps. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> but... I don't know. I th well, I can't remember what song it was. You started a cappella, but if everything falls apart, Grace, you could just stand at the front and belt it out. I'm sure that would work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'll just do that. <laughs> I did. I did hear Eric Bibb once in in concert, and the rig just went down completely, and that's exactly what he did. He just came on with an acoustic guitar, stood at the front of the stage, and just sang until eventually the the techie guys got things working. Wow. Uh, so yeah. there we are. Um, just not quite festival, but I am going to talk about the Blues Cruise because that was obviously a kind of fairly major recent event. Can I just say I would love to go on the Blues Cruise so you're allowed to tell me it was rubbish and that I didn't miss anything. <laughs> but uh, I suspect you're not going to do that. Do you want to say a wee bit about what that was like being being there with all those people? Uh, well, I I've can... just got to let the dog in because he's constantly yeah. scratching. Oh, so. poor dog. I can absolutely recommend that. I don't think they're going to do one next year, but if you get a chance to go the following year absolutely go because it was amazing <laughs> it was amazing and it, it, it was like there was about 20 odd bands on the boat and everybody's mixing with everybody um we're playing about four or five uh different occasions on different stages so you get to see everybody when whenever you want to it's like five star hotel kind of thing <laughs> it was amazing you so good. That. That was sorry <laughs> i'll just say if you get a chance to go in a couple of years yeah. go, go. <laughs> Well, it's 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 the sort of thing I would love to go, but convincing the wife is maybe a bit trickier. So unless I unless I go with daughter number one again or something, I don't know. That might be, <laughs> might be a possibility. And, and Joe Bonamassa, what a, what a legend! Um, uh, he, I mean, he he kind of pioneered, maybe not pioneered, but he very much uh, did the independent route when he was dropped by his label. So d did you get any inspiration from him, or are you just in awe of his guitar playing, like I am, or or what did we think of Mister Bonamassa? Well, I mean, obviously, he's like a genius. Um, you yeah. know, he's completely just incredible. King of the blues. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but also, like you say, on the um, industry side, the way he's um, and his manager have um, he made him such a titan and yeah. they're still independent and he's still controlling everything he does. Yeah. And, and now they're reaching out and helping other independent musicians as well. They've got that. their label. Yeah. So, yeah, there's so much to learn about how they do it. It's yeah. a massive inspiration and our go-to. I think, <laughs> it's, I think it's one of the good things uh, like about uh, Joe Bonamassa, regardless of how good he is, he's also a giver as well because he gives people like us a platform to go and play. And, they, you know, we knew quite a few of the other bands on there, like the Cinelli Brothers, King King, um, you know, Alice Armstrong and people like that. And it gives us an, a, a lift that we probably wouldn't have got before. So, no. you know, is even Amazing he's just added us that. to one of his um, editorial playlists, yeah. which has made a massive difference to our streaming. Yeah. So big art, big help for us. Yeah. yeah. No, and I love the stuff he does with the education side of it as well, the keeping the blues alive stuff, and he pushes Thank things you. into schools. And you no, know, I've I've got a lot of time for Joe. Uh, he is, however, by his own admission, addicted to buying guitars. Aaron, do you follow him in that? Do you when you're touring? Do you can you stay away from guitar shops, or are you always going in and buying more, uh, more? Well. Guitars? Uh, I, yeah, my guitar like collection has been growing, but steadily, <laughs> steadily. I don't know. It's not we... reached Bonamassa standards yet, then, no. Oh, no, God. No. is anybody? <laughs> <laughs> also, he's very lucky because he's been gifted so many guitars. I have. Yeah, so I have. he's yeah been very yeah. lucky yeah. on that front. Probably up in the twenties, I reckon. Oh, probably not that many. But <laughs> no, oh, I'd say probably about fifteen. I reckon about 15. I've and got now. <laughs> there we are. Uh, the box, the cigar box guitar, I was hugely impressed with on tour as well. It sounded awesome. Not not always the most forgiving of instruments. Is yours yours uh, fairly fairly um, reliable? Um, yeah, it is. It's it's very reliable uh, the way it plays, but we do have a lot of feedback issues with it <laughs> because of how it's been made. Yeah. But the, the sound of it, it like overtakes everything else so you have to use that one yeah it's got it's like literally just bolted together it's like a plank of wood just yeah a, literally yeah, yeah yeah with a bolt as the but it sounds you know, amazing so i yeah. don't care what it looks like and what yeah. it's made from it sounds amazing and that to be honest that's that's the most important thing no no i would go with that i think it sounds great uh, use it for as long as it'll keep together and i'm sure that yeah. you play it, eventually it'll fall apart but uh, <laughs> I think I'm lucky to have it as long as I have had, yeah, to be I fair. So. <laughs> uh, and Grace, I mean, mandolin and violin, not the most obvious of rock instruments. How on earth did that come about, that you ended up in a rock band with a mandolin and a violin? Yeah, good, good question. <laughs> so um, I actually got the mandolin um, because we used to play with this guy who used to sell instruments and he mm. had a little cra a red crafter mandolin. And um, so I got that because it was just a really nice looking little instrument. Yeah. And then musically, the mandolin, I it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I kind of unlike the guitar to a certain extent, the mandolin just like I it makes more sense anyway. Um, so then when we first started writing music together and then I got a violin because it's the, it's tuned the same as a mandolin, thought it would be cool to try that. Yeah. Um, and then when we were writing together to start with, we fell into a more Americana sound because of the instruments and Aaron also played finger style guitar, acoustic yeah. guitar. So we had a very Americana vibe, which you can definitely get more from the We Fly Free album because definitely. we were much more still, like we were still that on that Americana part. Yeah. kind of, yeah, um, time, yeah. So yeah, that's, and then it's just led into now I've got like a, Iceman style electric mandolin that I play with a slide. So it's just like evolved. Yeah. And that was because I bought a resonator mandolin, which had a really high action. Mm. So I tried it with a slide and we were like, that's cool. And yeah. that's now I've always just played with a slide. And so. in the studio, uh, when we were recording, she goes through an amp as well. So, you know, yeah. gives it a real, real good sound. Yeah. Bit of a punch. No, it, and uh, again, sounds awesome. Thank you very much. I, I'd never seen slide mandolin before. So that was a, an <laughs> education for me. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, it, it maybe I mean I I wondered if it was an instrument you grew up with, so it's interesting. No, it's one that you can adopted uh, relatively recently. Because I was wanting to ask about your early influences when you when you were at home. So before primary school, even before you kind of thought I could be a musician, what what was the music you heard in your house? Was it older siblings? Was it your parents' music? Was it just stuff on the radio? What 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 did you hear as you were growing up? 
both of you? Well, so for me, um, it was like 50s and 60s stuff from a dad's side of things because he loved rock and roll. Uh, big fan of Elvis and um, Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, people like that. And my mum's side was was a little bit more different. I mean, even though she loved the Beatles, I think ABBA was one of her favourites. So it's a little bit of a... Nothing yeah. wrong with ABBA. Nothing wrong no, with ABBA. No, yeah, yeah, love it. So, yeah, totally. yeah. And mine was, um, like, we started, me and my sister started piano lessons when we were four. So it was always, mum's very much always encouraged us in music and my dad as well. And it was kind of, mum's side was Beatles, the Beatles. And we had the, all the books and we used to play them on the piano and sing them and sing harmonies. And then my dad's influence was more like soul, Dusty Springfield, Motown and stuff, which was a big inspiration vocally. Mm. Um so and then actually it wasn't until when we met and I was it was a rock pub where I was working where we we met so I then started to hear all the classic rock stuff um and then Aaron was introducing yeah. me to it as well right Led Zeppelin and Cream and even like Thunder company, as well Thunder, we were huge yeah. like we are still huge Thunder fans yeah. so then that all came into it and then I found Bonnie Raitt, like the blues side and yeah. Vassa Clements and blues mandolin. So I'm um, not Vassa Clements, Rich El Del Grosso. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, I, I, much better musical education than I grew up with, I, um, I, I suspect. I, I, I grew up with uh, James Last in the house, which you don't want to look up. Trust me. Uh, James like so well think uh, I think Andrew Rue but worse I don't know if that helps oh. uh, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah so were you involved in music at school were you in bands at school did you did you play in in, in uh, or were you not really it was only when you kind of uh, met and took off as a, a, a duo that you that you were in a band Grace or Aaron you must have been in bands as well I'm guessing both of you no I'm well, I mean, just jump in when you feel like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, when I left school, I, I we joined a band and uh, was involved in a couple of rock bands and things like that. Um, but that that was not a huge my, amount, was it? Not a huge but amount. Felt like yeah. a I was always doing something or other, yeah. either like a vocal group or a meatloaf tribute band. I had my own country band before we yeah. met. Yeah. Um. So always been doing something and then at school I went through every woodwind instrument so started flute clarinet saxophone piccolo went right through those <laughs> but I've always been obsessed with singing I've always been the girl that sings <laughs> so and and long may it continue uh yeah. that, that, um, <laughs> I'm just looking to see what else uh, I am tempted to ask, what was the first song you wrote? When were you first realised oh, no. that I can write a song? Or what, because no, it fascinates me, that sort of creative side of things, where somebody thinks, I can do that. Well, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't with the first song. We didn't think we can write songs, because the no. first song we wrote was called I Want a Winnie Bago, because we wanted a camper van. <laughs> and so we wrote I Want a Winnie Bago, which yeah. is, and we both remember it very well. Yeah. And then we wrote a song about the Ice Road Truckers, yeah. which is a TV programme. The Ice watching. Road, yeah. Um, but we wrote so many rubbish songs, like yeah. awful songs. So it wasn't like, oh, we're gifted. <laughs> it was like... But we didn't, this... we didn't necessarily know that were rubbish at the time it's only when we look back <laughs> only when we look back and think oh my god yeah but it's it's one of those things isn't it it's a progression i suppose and um yeah yeah just yeah. got to learn the craft isn't exactly you, I guess. yeah yeah, well, no, you jumped in with both feet, and obviously it's it's paid off. So, um, no, thank you for keeping going with that. And I, I, and I suspect your fans will demand. Uh, uh, I want to win a bego at some point. On our <laughs> I'm certainly going to start a campaign on the Facebook page. Uh, <laughs> sort of, who was it? Was it John Baez? John Baez that did the Lord won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? What was that? You see, you oh could, yeah, 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 that's cool. You could end up Not in a <laughs> well, we we could we could uh, we could release it, I suppose, and see if we can get an endorsement from Winnie Bago. You never know. <laughs> Worth a try. Worth a try. Nothing ever. Uh, I mean, the other one of the other things I wanted to pick up on is you're still clearly music fans. You still not only love performing, but you you love listening to other bands. And again, you're always talking about the people you're going to see and uh, yeah. and the people you're enjoying. Um, so one of the questions again, your your the folk on Facebook were asking is who, if you had the chance to work with anybody, uh, I was just going to ask anybody, but somebody said alive or dead, so they, they we're even allowing zombie bands here. So if you had the oh. chance to work out with, with anybody, who would you like to go for? 
Christ. There's so many, there's so many, to be fair. Hmm. I'll let you go first, I'm thinking still. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm a massive, like, Paul Rogers fan. Hmm. Right. So um, we're also huge Queen fans, hmm. but then... So but um, we say alive or dead, so are we talking Freddy here or are we... Oh, it's got to be Freddy oh, then, Freddy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for me, uh, I, I'm, like my dad, I'm a big Elvis fan, so, you know, I, I think he, he could sing the phone book, to be honest. So I think he was amazing. Um, but if we're talking about someone that's still alive right now, I think Thunder would be my, my choice. Oh, I love right. Thunder. So, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. And then yeah. we're massive rival sons fans. Oh as well. yes, absolutely. And we're actually we going to see them tomorrow night, and oh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be uh, little fans and go to their sign yeah. at the record shop. Yeah. So we're gonna go there like seven hours early, so we can get them to sign out. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of your one of your fans did say, suggest rival sons. Oscar Watmore, I think it is, on the Facebook page said, uh, "What about rival sons?" So that's interesting. He's he's pegged you. He's got you right. Uh, and I forgot to name check. Andy Stewart was asking about the, who you wanted to work with, uh, living or dead. It came up a minute ago. We're running out of time. I haven't paid for a full, um, oh. uh, a, a full thing. So uh, we can, if you want, uh, we can come out and come back in again and get a few more minutes. But otherwise, we can finish when it finishes. It's up to you. You can let me know where you want to keep going. What you want to do. It's fine with us. Yeah. If you've got yeah. more stuff you wanted to cover, then we're happy to carry yeah. on. There's always more stuff I want to cover. It's uh, <laughs> obvious well that I get cut off when I get cut off. Uh, so yes, um, uh, well, let's stick with your fans then towards the end. I'm going to just make a statement and you can react to it. Your fans are awesome. Go I know, I amazing. know, we're so lucky. <laughs> they are amazing, they really are so they really supportive. Are. And yeah. like we were saying, like uh, I've already said it, but it with this album, it's like a prime example of like it's like Jesus, it's like we've literally rallied the troops and everyone's like, come on guys there's such a good energy yeah, we're so, so lucky yeah. so lucky yeah no i mean i think when it looked at one point like you were going to have to stuff records and record sleeves at one point just to get the album out you would have had hundreds of volunteers i'm sure there would have been I know. yeah in. incredible you really have some some uh some great fans okay uh we're almost out of time let's just see what am i going to jump to christmas song i love christmas songs Fantastic that you had a Christmas song last year. Are we getting another one this year? Are you really re-releasing last year's? Any plans for Christmas? We will be re-releasing. Yeah, yeah we're re-releasing. re-releasing. But we've got two Christmas songs. We've got the um, the more upbeat one and the slower one, which is more uh, like with the piano and stuff. Um, yeah, but that was that was great. So there'll be two. They'll be re-released this year. Yeah. Right, that makes Maybe me very happy. Maybe that one. Yeah, I, I just got. According to my iTunes account, I have five and a half days worth of Christmas songs, which is slightly frightening. Oh, mate! Um, oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love Christmas. Well, one, of, one of my favourite sort of vinyl records is I've got a white vinyl of Elvis's Christmas album, which I just love as well. But there we are. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, can, can you send me a picture of it? I want to see it. I I will do. I will do. Uh, I could, I'll dig it out just now and hold it up while you're answering the next question. Is that like <laughs> the best Christmas album ever, though? It's fantastic. I mean, everyone's yeah. a winner. What can you say? And it's Elvis singing it exactly. as well. Just uh, um, and just a kind of real mix of of uh, um, sacred and secular. So just a a, a great a great uh, album to have. Uh, Lee Chambers, one of your fans, asked Boathouse Sessions. Is that going to be put out for download? Again, obviously a long-standing fan looking for for more access to yet more. Uh, more records while you're answering that I'm going to find Elvis <laughs> oh, nice. yeah so um, yeah we are we are looking to um, re-release the Boathouse session it was a one we went into the studio for a day and recorded some stuff live as a duo so first yeah. time duo stuff yeah um, recording it was just, duo stuff yeah just us two and my drum yeah and <laughs> yeah. so yeah we are looking to to um, Re-release it maybe just for a yeah. short time, just yeah. let it go out because it's, it's not on streaming period. sites. So no, that's right. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see this vinyl. Oh yeah. No, no, you need to keep going on up. Me too. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. There we are. Elvis and white vinyl. Oh, oh mate, that oh, is wow. so cool. <laughs> that's pretty pristine as well. That is amazing. I love it. So, yes, not quite sure where I picked that. I can't get it back in the sleeve just now. That's why I wasted more time <laughs> running out of time and I'm showing you holding up the <laughs> records. That's all right. that, was wor- that was worth it, though. Yeah, that yeah. was worth it, for sure. <laughs> uh, also, I, I, actually, just various people were posting pictures of them playing uh, Aces Are High on, on their, their uh, hi-fi kit when they were 
uh, so pleased to get it through the post and I did suffer high fi envy at that point. Listen, mine I got when I was 21. That was my 21st birthday party. So it's it's clinging on by, by this kind of... Much <laughs> wow. uh, nice. uh, 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 Jeff Turner. Jeff Turner said a killer video with Golden would put you into top 10 in the singles charts. What do you what do you feel about that? Yeah, we've never released um, a ballad as a single, and we've never done a music video. Well, apart from for tomorrow, which we've done on our iPhone. Yeah. In the... <laughs> but um, we, we we definitely want to do gold, and I'd yeah. probably do it next as the next single. So yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Right, well, there, well, yeah. well, Jeff's going to buy one copy anyway, at least, so uh, we can hold him to that because he asked for it, so uh, uh, he can get it. Jeff, tell me. <laughs> There. The last fan question, just before we, we, we run out, I'll maybe go back and do a couple more before the, the stream dies. Uh, Sally Langley asked, if you had to change your name, what would you change it to? My impression was you struggled to get to where rivers meet. So uh, do you regret that? Would you think, curses, we should have called ourselves something else? Or where, what would you do instead? Any ideas? Um, uh, personally, I love the name. Uh, and it took such a long time to to get to to that name, to be honest. It was one of the hardest things we've ever had to do, really, wasn't that's it? That's a bit dramatic. What, trying to find out? <laughs> do you remember? The hardest thing we've ever do you had remember? To do. Yeah, but that's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Um, it that's was I don't want to cause marital strife. Hard, yeah. I didn't mean to cause marital strife. Just uh, <laughs> stay. Just, you're, you're still friends. Come on. Uh, <laughs> So we're sticking with the name then. We've got no Sally's Sally made no suggestions, so I don't know that there's anything well, else. Well, it would our, the only other thing would be the bonds. Yeah, the bonds. But, that, but you didn't like that anyway, no. did you? No, so not really. No. No, I wasn't. I wasn't hundred percent keen on that. I think because um, a bit cliche. Yeah. 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 So no, not really. <laughs> You didn't think of naming yourself after the dog. Can we see the dog? You brought the dog into the room, and then you've kept oh, he's there. The camera. Oh, yeah, he's Hey. It's, right <laughs> yeah. it's always attached to us one yeah. way or another. He, he he's always like, like about six inches. He's away. never ever alone, is he? He's ever. always with somebody. He's, yeah. If he's not yeah. with us, he's with Grace's his mum or our auntie. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, or he, your mum and dad. Or mum and dad. Yeah. Now, yeah. Comes on tour with you then, or uh... definitely not. No, no. he would oh. not enjoy that. No, he'd hate no. it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you could get him with sort of dog ear things protectors. Good just... idea. Yeah, <laughs> he'd have to like he's, he'd just require his own entourage. And he'd, and he'd have to wrap him up warm all yeah. the time, wouldn't you? Because he's yeah. he's always cold. Our dog used to howl along to certain tunes, so you need to find the right tunes, and and he could there as part of your backing. Oh. That'd be good. Uh, bizarrely, it was the Archer's theme song set our dog off every time. So really, uh, oh. absolutely, yeah. When it got to the rump, to dum 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 bit at the end, he just he started howling. So there we are. Oh, brilliant. Oh. <laughs> Well, I think I've I've kind of come to the end of my questions. Um, I, there's I mean, there's various there's tons of things I could talk about. I would happily continue to talk to you, but uh, you've been very kind. You've given me about forty minutes of your time. Thank you very much for that. Is, is there anything else you want to announce? Is there anything? I'm trying to get an exclusive here. Is there anything else you want to announce or talk about or or what what's exciting you at the moment that that you're that you're pleased to share with your fans or or whoever? I would say. Um... We are going to be switching things up next year. Um, and previous, like the last three years, we've gone into the studio for like a big chunk of time, like three months. And we've found that increasingly difficult because we're independent. And when, we, when we're recording music, we don't want to do anything else. We just yeah. want to focus on that, which has made things pretty tough. And so what we're planning to do is record throughout the year rather than going in one chunk. Mm. So we're going to be releasing re more regularly. Um, and so and we're really excited about that. It, yeah. yeah, and also not feel like we have to have definite answers when we go in the studio as to what sound we want. We can kind of let it evolve over a year. Yeah. And so See that's why like, we're really excited about that. Yeah. It's like to be different and have yeah. more, like be creative throughout the year rather than even one chunk. Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. Less than a minute to go. It's saying we timed that almost perfectly. Thank you very much. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, it's been you have been great just chatting away loads of questions uh, asked and answered so thank you very much and uh, long may you continue to make music I'm uh, hugely uh, hugely excited to hear what you're doing next and I really hope I'll manage to see you when you when you come to Glasgow next year yeah so do we oh, yeah fingers crossed yeah Right. Thank you very it. much. Appreciate Thank your you time. Uh, and wave bye bye to your dog as well. Thanks very much. It's been. I will. Yeah, will. <laughs> Take care. Bye, -bye just now. Thank you. Bye. Bye.